Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Bell V-280 Valor marks flight test milestone. FAA loosens doors off helicopter flight ban. And Chinese co-pilot reportedly nearly pulled out of airplane. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. It's May 18th, and this is Airborne Unlimited. The Bell V-280 Valor has reached a significant milestone in its flight test program. On May 11th, the aircraft flew in cruise mode for the first time, reaching a true airspeed of 190 knots. The flight marks the first time the airplane has transitioned from vertical to horizontal flight by pivoting the rotors to a forward-facing configuration. The team plans to gradually expand the aircraft's flight envelope with a goal of achieving the designed cruise speed of 280 knots. The V-280 Valor is powered by two 5,000 horsepower GE T-64 GE 419 engines. It is designed to carry a crew of four and up to 14 passengers at a combat range of between 500 and 800 nautical miles. The aircraft first flew on December 18th of last year. It has accumulated more than 27 hours of flight time and 90 hours of rotor turn time. The V-280 Valor is Bell's entry into the U.S. Army's Joint Multi-Rotor Technology Demonstrator Program, a precursor to the future vertical lift program. After the break, A330neo launch operator completes maiden flight. The dream is real. A truly affordable personal jet aircraft. The Subsonics Personal Jet Kit is priced at only $42,000. Kit Plus Engine is still under $100K. Add instruments, upholstery, and paint, and you're flying. It's time to put your money where your bucket list is. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, Airborne Unmanned, the AMA Drone Report, our website or podcast, just email to news by at aero-news.net. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The first A330neo for launch operator TAP Air Portugal MSN1819 recently completed the 4-hour and 32-minute maiden flight. The aircraft now joins the fleet of two A330-900 test aircraft already performing flight tests since October 19, 2017. MSN1819 is the first aircraft fitted with airspace cabin by Airbus. It is equipped with light flight test instrumentation during its test phase to check cabin systems such as air conditioning, crew rest, etc. The Academy of Model Aeronautics says it's been a successful year lobbying in Washington on behalf of its members. From engaging with legislators at all levels to championing additional temporary flight restriction waivers, AMA was actually involved on many fronts to preserve the hobby. Model aviation faced many challenges, including an increase in government involvement and proposed regulations. Gulfstream's G500 and G600 set tandem city pair records from Asia to North America. The sister aircraft flew together. On April 20th, the G500 and G600 flew from Shanghai to Honolulu at an average speed of Mach 0.90. The G500 made the flight in 8 hours and 34 minutes, with the G600 arriving just one minute later. The next day, the two aircraft traveled from Honolulu to Savannah, again at Mach 0.90. The G500 made the flight in 7 hours and 44 minutes, and the G600 clocked in at 7 hours and 49 minutes. A new book by Wes Olofshevsky, whom you probably recognize as the artist behind Clyde Morris, looks at the contributions of the Great Lakes region to the war effort. Canada was the first North American nation to enter the war, and a fleet of cargo vessels went from the freshwater seas and joined the battle of the Atlantic. 
Their sacrifice has for many years been obscured in history. In this book, for the first time, both stories are detailed, as well as the stories of the U-boats that set upon them. Check out ClydeMorris.com for more information. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. The FAA has released a modification of its policy banning doors off helicopter flights that was put in place following an accident in New York City that resulted in the fatal injury of five passengers aboard the aircraft. According to a national policy notice announcing the change, all principal inspectors, aviation inspectors, and aviation safety technicians and safety assurance offices who have oversight responsibility of operators or pilots that conduct doors off flight for compensation or hire are required to convey the information contained in the order to those operators or pilots immediately. Operators and pilots must cease using SPRSs during doors off flight operations for compensation or hire until the FS Office of Safety Standards, on behalf of the acting administrator, issues a letter of authorization for those supplemental restraints. The LOA will be issued after determining that the restraints to be used can be quickly released by a passenger, with minimal difficulty and without impending aggress from the aircraft in emergency. The FAA will consider the design, manufacture, installation, and operation of the SPRS when reviewing all applications for an LOA. The ability of a passenger to quickly release a restraint with minimal difficulty must be inherent to the SPRS. After these messages, Chinese co-pilot reportedly nearly pulled out of airplane. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Welcome back. The co-pilot of a Sichuan's Airlines flight was reportedly sucked halfway out of the airplane when a cockpit window fell at cruising altitude. The Airbus A319 had 119 passengers on board and was about a half hour into its flight to the capital of Tibet when the incident occurred. The captain of the airplane said that the windshield cracked suddenly. The next thing I know, my co-pilot had been sucked halfway out of the window. He said there was no warning before the window gave way. He said the plane was shaking hard and he could not hear the radio. The co-pilot was wearing his seatbelt and was not pulled completely out of the airplane. He suffered only minor injuries according to the reports. None of the passengers were injured. Airbus has assigned a team to travel to China to investigate the incident according to Chinese authorities. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, alternating with Airborne Unmanned on Tuesday and the AMA Drone Report each Thursday. Additional breaking news bulletins may be posted for important stories that fall outside for our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Have a great weekend and see you Monday.